Ciao guys, it's Chef from Pressure Luck. That would be so greedy of me to go all the way to Italy and not bring you back some pastas, wouldn't it? So, of course, when I was in Rome, I did as the Romans did, and I had some amazing pasta, some of the best ever, and there were two kinds that I really want to make. This pasta is going to focus on a spicy, tomato-y, smoky, pancetta-y, bacon-y amazingness called bah. And it's called Bucatini alla... Um, what is it called? Bucatini alla Amatriana. Bucatini alla Amatriciana. And I think I said that right. I feel so silly saying it. But wait until you see how easy it is to make and the flavors are really just gonna take you right to Rome itself. So let's go right to the Instant Pot and make some fantastic and easy Bucatini or spaghetti alla Amatriciana. I think I said that right. I still can't tell if I did. But regardless, you'll get the gist of it. Let's go. I wanna start by adding three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil to the Instant Pot. So I want to come down to my Instant Pot control panel and hit my saute button and adjust so I'm on the more or the high setting. And then once the oil is nice and heated in the pot, I want to add in about 10 ounces of pancetta that's diced. This is two 5 ounce packages. There we go, I'm going to add that in. And the pancetta is just a really nice thick Italian bacon. <laughs> and this is going to take between 5 to 10 minutes until it gets nice and crispy. So just keep alternating between stirring and setting until it becomes that way. So just keep a close eye on it and just stand here while it's happening. And after about eight minutes of cooking inside the oil, you'll see the pancetta will have released tons of juices if it's from its own fat, which is actually phenomenal for this sauce. And you'll see when it looks like this, just like that, we are ready to go. So I want to take a slotted spoon and remove it from the pot. Get all that pancetta out of there. All right, and there is all my pancetta, and I'm going to set that aside for later. And then I want to take one medium yellow onion, and I'm gonna dice it up. And now we have this amazing combination of the olive oil and the pancetta juices in the pot, and I wanna take my onions and cook them in that. And I'm gonna do this for about three minutes. Now my onions release water when they cook, and so it's gonna be very easy to deglaze the bottom of the pot from any of the pancetta that's stuck on it while cooking, and we wanna make sure we do that. We wanna make it nice and smooth, so just take like a wooden spatula or a mixing spoon and just do that to the bottom of the pot so it's nice and shiny. I love when things serve as two purposes, flavor and convenience. And believe it or not, there's actually no garlic in an amatrachana. So after about three minutes of the onions cooking and looking like this, we're gonna add in our sauce. And to make that sauce, I'm gonna take one 28 ounce can of San Marzano crushed tomatoes. Now San Marzano is from a region of Italy and you definitely wanna use these if possible. You can find them in most of the markets for sure, or you can just use a regular 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. But I think this stuff is absolutely amazing and sets it above the rest for this type of sauce. Italy just has the best tomatoes, so why not just use the best? And this is coming from a guy who doesn't even love tomatoes. Now I want to add that to my pot. As well as two cups of garlic broth, and that's going to be two teaspoons of garlic better than bouillon mixed with two cups of water. Or if you don't have the garlic base, which I'll link to online, you can get the chicken base. That works totally fine too. Chicken broth or garlic broth will be totally fine for this one. And now let's just stir everything together in the pot. And we're going to season it with a half a teaspoon of crushed red peppers. It's a little bit of a spicy pasta, like I said. And you could use less or more if you like. You don't have to add them at all if you don't want to. And we are going to add our pasta, which I'm using a perciatelli or persiatelli, or you can also use a bucatini, which is basically, they're both the same thing. It's a hollow spaghetti. See, it's like a spaghetti with little holes at the end here. They're like hollow. You see that little hollow holes? And I want to take my pasta and I want to break it and just put it into the pot. And people are like, why do you break your pasta when you put it in the Instant Pot? Well, because it won't fit if I don't. It's going to just jut out and we can't have that happen. We want the whole thing to cook. And by the way, it's perfectly long enough as it is. One piece is super long, so cutting it in half is perfect. And then let's just take a spoon and smooth it out. We don't really want to press it down too hard. We just kind of want to have it nice and smooth so it's nice and submerged in the pasta sauce here. This is going to be unbelievably delicious. So when we're looking like this, we are perfect. All right, let's get that lid on and cook. So I'm going to secure my lid. Make sure that I'm in sealing position. Now I want to come back to my control panel, hit the keep warm cancel button or just the cancel button depending on your model. And then I want to hit the manual button or the pressure cook button depending on your model. And I want to pressure cook on this guys for 10 minutes at high pressure. See, 10 minutes, high pressure. And look at how beautiful that pancetta is, by the way. Once it's rested for a bit, it becomes super crispy and super perfect, just how we want it. So make sure that even though when you're cooking it in the pot, it might not be crispy right away in the oil, it will get there when it sits out to dry in a little bit of a bowl. It's phenomenal. All right, we're gonna add this in at the very end. Now that we're done cooking, let's do a quick release. And our pin just dropped, so I'm gonna take the lid off. And there's my pasta. 
And I'm gonna stir it around inside the pot a little bit here. It's gonna be nice and thick. We wanna stir it around in the pot for a few moments. If some of the pasta looks like it might not have been done yet, that's fine. We're gonna just let it sit here for about three minutes and stir it up really good as the pasta continues to cook through a little bit. And the sauce is absolutely perfect for this, guys. It's a wonderfully thick, spicy tomato sauce. Now I wanna add in a quarter of a cup of a grated Pecorino Romano cheese as well as my pancetta. And now let's reserve some of this, by the way, also for sprinkling on top at the very end when we garnish our pasta. And stir everything in together nice and good. This is gonna be a super wonderful pasta. And lastly, I'm gonna add in one more tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And then just stir that up with everything else in the pot. It's gonna give it that really nice final burst of flavor. And there we have it, guys. Our bucatini a la amatrichana. I'm gonna add this now. <laughs> Do you like the way I did that? <laughs> I'm gonna add, <laughs> I sound so ridiculous when I say that, don't I? All right, I'm gonna add this now to a bowl and serve it up. All right, and here we go, right into my bowl. Oh, such a fantastic sauce. A nice, good amount in there. You can even drizzle a little more olive oil over it if you wish and then mix that up. Some people really like doing that, and I can't say that I blame them. And now I'm gonna sprinkle on some of that reserved pancetta that I have nice and crisped, as well as just a little bit more Pecorino Romano cheese. And presto, we are done and ready to serve. Let's try it out. And here it is, guys, let's try it out. Oh boy, I always say that, oh boy. Maybe I should say, oh girl. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Ooh, look at this. How the sauce has clung to the pasta so beautifully. Oh, oh, the flavors. That amazing, like, spicy tomato sauce, thanks to those amazing San Marzano tomatoes with the pancetta mixed in, and I said with the Pecorino Romano in that sauce, everything. This is taking me straight to my happy place. What a great noodle bucatini is too. Like a cute mini thin tube, but like a really thick hollowed spaghetti, whatever you want to call it. Could it either be fat or thin compared to other pastas. Everything that is going on in this bowl of pasta right now is heavenly. It's a wonderfully thick sauce, which is exactly as it should be. It should cling really nicely to the pasta. Although sometimes you'll find variations where it's more of a thinner, runnier sauce with a lot of oil in it. I don't really like it like that. I like it nice and thick and clinging to my pasta. Oh, and the spice level is perfect. It really kicks it up, but it's not overbearing at all. It just gives you a little bit of a little ha into your mouth when you eat it. Yeah, whatever that is, a ha. We'll call it a ha level of spice. This stuff right here is the bomb. And before I eat this entire pot of this pasta, I'm gonna put this down and say thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos and these recipes, go to PressureLawCooking.com where I have over 150 recipes with more and more and more coming. You could also pin any recipe you want to any board on Pinterest. It's super easy, just hover over an image and hit the save button with the Pinterest logo. Go to Facebook.com slash PressureLawCooking and like the page. You'll always wanna be in the know whenever new recipes drop and for any other information that comes out, it's a very useful page for you. So also share the wall to anybody else who uses a pressure cooker or to friends and family who might be interested in one that'd be great and of course at pressure luck subscribe to me on youtube for all my videos in one place super convenient instagram twitter and pinterest thank you so much again guys and this pasta is truly the best gift you can have when you come back from italy right here right in your house being able to make it right on your own and look at this the bowl's lit clean don't you wanna a matrachana mm.